George Moore came to Britain from Australia, where his interests included a cattle farm in the Yarra Valley. At weekends, he was a racing legend with a magnificent house in Sydney. But during the week, he was a bushman through and through. His impact on British racing was explosive. Within weeks, he'd won the 2,000 guineas on Royal Palace. This is George Moore's bloody head fighting it out. As they race up towards the line, it's Tashtu on the stand side, Royal Palace, and up the line, Royal Palace is the winner. The man he succeeded with Noel Merlis was Lester Piggott. Next was the 1,000 guineas on Fleet. And it's Fleet on the far side now, Pierre on the near side, picks the date, coming to challenge these two. But Fleet for Noel Merlis is just the leader from Pierre in second place. Then comes Lacker and picks the date, and Pauly Girl finishing fast on the far side. Then comes World, racing up the hill, and it's Fleet from Pierre, Lacker in third place. Coming up to the line, and Fleet is the leader from Pierre, from Pauly Girl on the far side. And it's Fleet from... Jockey ship supreme. But what are the qualities which Moore rates as most important for a jockey? Well, I think being fit is one of the qualities, and two is uh, being a good judge of pace, and three is to always have a horse travelling well for you, and knowing when he can go and when he's not to go. Um, I think Australian jockeys have got great balance. This is why they do so well over here, you think? Well, I think so. Um, I think that they learn to ride differently to here, plus they have more experience in the morning, and uh, I think they get a horse very well balanced. Do you have any pre-race nerves at all? Well, uh, not so much racing, but I, I've been on horses all my life and I've known the pitfalls since I was very young because I had plenty of busters and plenty of falls. So, I mean, as far as nerve goes, I think it's a bit about mind over matter. And if you let yourself think about it, you'll probably get frightened. But you've got to just think to yourself, well, I'm here and what can I do about it? Anything I can do is to keep out of trouble and, and, <laughs> and not fall off. A lot of people are very impressed by the way you switch your whip from one hand to another. Will you show us how you do this? Yes, well, uh, as I was explaining to you, I'm holding the reins and I'm riding, say, uh, right-handed. Well, I come up and I cross the reins over with this hand and take the whip off or upside, upside this way with my other hand so that I don't lose, I don't have to put it down and then change holes and then take it through. The uh, usual way is to pull it through. Well, I've never done it that way and uh, in fact in Australia I wouldn't pull a whip through very much there at all. They've made you second favourite for the Jockeys Championship. Are you going to go for this? Well it'll be a great uh, thrill to be able to win it but I don't think that uh, I've got the stamina to stand up to these uh, uh, racing in the afternoon and then back up at night and then drive 200 mile uh, the next day to ride somewhere and drive back again. I think I'll be contented if I can win some of the decent races and, and just poke along to the better meetings. By now, they were betting that Moore would win all five classics, something no jockeys ever achieved. Royal Palace was a hot favourite for the derby. At the two furlong marker, it's Royal Palace, the leader from Royal Sword in second place. Sloop is coming there with a run on the outside. And here comes Rimbocco. They're coming to the furlong pole now. And it's Royal Palace, the leader from Rimbocco and Lester Pickett on the stand side. In the centre, it's Royal Sword. Then comes Sloop coming up towards the line. And it's Royal Palace being challenged by Rimbocco, but Royal Palace is going to hold. Sadly, the Oaks and the St. Ledger escaped him. He stayed in England for just six months, flying off without warning on the night of the champion stakes. <laughs>